our work right now on the planet is to bring honoring and sanctity to the invisible just as much as the visible. The invisible results are things like feeling good, things like feeling connected, things like our health, our well-being, a feeling of joy, pleasure. Embodiment can't be faked once you're in an open state where you actually can see through a clear lens. You know, you're not clouded by fear, you're not clouded by the amygdala, you're not clouded by society's news and all the fear-based stuff, and you're just with you. Then you get to decide where you think we actually are. Energy is information. We're here to experience the full spectrum. That worthiness is hard for you. There's nothing wrong with you. It is a muscle that we kind of have to learn how to access. You are not disempowered and you have power in every area of your life all the time. I believe that chronic illness is an opportunity for us to heal. Health, it's a choice. Listening to your body if you so choose. My prayer for the world would be that they would know the infinite love of God. Aloha and welcome to the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast, formerly known as the Embodied Healing Self Podcast, with your host, Jen Mons. Join me each week for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around awakening to your soul purpose through five-element well-being. Thank you so much for joining in. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another week on the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast. So this week's episode might be one of the most important episodes you listen to. I think they're all pretty good. Of course I do. I get a lot of good feedback on them. And this one, I'm I'm really approaching it to something that I've just been noticing a lot lately and a theme that when I look back over my 12 years of coaching and in my own personal life with the women that I've worked with and even just being a mother to two beautiful and very strong girls, what I often hear people say, women specifically mostly, but men, I know you can relate to this too, is that the thing that holds them back the most in life is themselves. That they find over and over again, and I'm going to say we, well the former version of me I guess I could relate to, might notice That there are things that you want in your life and the only thing standing in the way between you and what you believe to be true as possible is you. So I'm wondering, can you relate to this? I'm going to talk today about the law of diminishing intention. I'm going to talk about attention deficit disorder, which is happening in this country in the time that we're living in. And it's what is keeping you from living the life you want to live. It's actually quite simple. It actually really is very, very simple because guess what? Energy loves clarity and clarity comes from your intention. But if you don't take time, if you don't create the space to be intentional every day, then you're just walking through life, but you're not really embodying it. There's a difference. There's a big difference. So I want to invite you just to consider today, how intentional am I in my life? Let's first begin by just taking for a moment to consider where you are in your life. Maybe reflecting back on a couple of things that you are really proud of, some big celebrations, accomplishments, events, experiences. Just notice the things that flash up as you reflect. And think again where you are now and where you want to go. I talk a lot about making decisions based on who you want to become, not where you've been. I'm going to say that again because it's, it's what separates people from living a mediocre life to doing extraordinary things and really feeling like at the end of the day, at the end of their life, that they lived a fulfilling life. You've heard me refer to the book 
I think it's called Top 5 Biggest Regrets. Can't think of the author in this moment, but the number one is that people didn't live their truth. And one of the reasons that happens, we'll put that link in the show notes to that book, is because people are not living with intention. I like to say I shifted probably 10 years ago from anything is possible to everything is possible. And I, I really do believe that. I've just seen it happen so many times. But you know what? That's what I choose to focus on. And what's happening with most people is they're so focused on what is not working. What happens when you shift your energy into what is already working for you? You completely shift your energy when you shift your mindset to open up to the possibility of what, how you're already being supported. And this, this thing happens energetically where you just get to see how supported you are by people. I mean, it seems like magic, but really we're just getting out of our own way because when we don't feel supported, when we don't believe we have enough, when we're in scarcity, we don't have support, we don't have love, we don't have money, we're just not choosing to see what's already there. We're so focused on what isn't working. The minute you shift your mind into the place of what is working, more tends to pour in. It's a beautiful place to be. So this concept of attention deficit disorder actually I read about and it's something that when I was reading about it, now we all hear of ADHD, right? That's, that's easy. I mean, many of you can even probably relate to that. Having a hard time focusing, that's the one we hear of the most common. But what about attention deficit disorder? And the first time I heard about this was from Russell Barkley. He has a PhD where he really started to expand on this concept of intention deficit order because a lot of people are walking around thinking that they're because we're, we hear it that they have some inability to focus attention deficit disorder but I want to invite you to consider if you really have an intention deficit disorder and you know what the biggest block is to that is your busyness your busyness your overwhelm leading you to burnout been there, done that. It's the it's the women that I support because this is like, it's almost like a disease in our culture. That's what we learned in the pandemic, right? Like everybody slowed down. How quickly did everybody go back to what they were doing before? I mean, it's crazy. And I myself have had, in the former version of me, two health crises, 2006, 2014, because of overworking. So it took me, you know, not just once, but twice to really let it settle in. So what is intention deficit disorder? It's when we are not intentional with our time, with our choices, with the people that we spend time with. It's not taking the time to make decisions that are in alignment with your values. And so if we don't have the bigger picture, the bigger goal in life, whatever that is, one year, three years, five years, 10 years, and there's a difference between a goal and an intention. A goal is like a solid result. An intention is a way of being to get to that result. Do you see the difference? Because what happens a lot of times and this was happening with me so many times in so many different areas of my life is that when you focus on the goal, like the result, the tangible number, what if you're limiting yourself? What if what is possible is better than you could possibly imagine? That's the shift is opening up to possibility. And so rather than looking at something as if you're struggling to actually focus and get something done, shift your awareness to realize and take ownership that you're not actually in alignment with what you say you want to do. That's where the intention comes in. Intention. 
And I'm going to share a little bit about the law of diminishing intention. I see this, I see this in life. I've seen it in myself. The law of diminishing intent states that the longer you wait to do something that you should do now, the greater the odds are that you'll never actually do it. And this concept was originated by Jim Rohn. It was John Maxwell who later wrote about this in the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. So the law of diminishing intention applies to everybody. Everybody who wants to accomplish something, you start by getting clear on the what and the why. It's really important to connect with your why. Why does this matter to you? And you, and you want to come from a healthy place. This is, this is huge. The why is super, super big because if you're, if you're entering a relationship to an intention or a goal from an unhealthy place, such as people pleasing or fear or scarcity or the need to be valued or appreciated. And I have learned my lesson in, in this. I've shared with you a couple of times a decision that I made in my business a few years back to partner with somebody that ended up being a major wrong turn. But you know what? It gave me clarity on what I'm not available for. But I entered that relationship from a place of you know, my actually out of alignment, a place of seeking value, a fear of rejection, if I'm being honest, looking back. So anytime you step into relationship, and what I mean by that is anytime that you make a decision, because a decision creates momentum, every decision that you make unfolds the path before you. Every decision, every yes, every no, and every Aligned yes is important as every sacred no. Make sure when you make a decision that it is aligned with your truth. Ask yourself, is this aligned with my values? Is it the right time? Does it have to be me? Does it have to be this person, this co-creation, this, this book, this opportunity? Because sometimes we want something, but it's not the right person. It's not the right time. But be really clear in knowing why you're making the decision the way that you are. If you're approaching it from a place of scarcity or fear, then it's unhealthy. If you're approaching it from a place of trust, it's probably healthy. So you don't always have to know the how, but when you know the what and the why, and again, really being clear on your why because energy loves clarity. When you know what it is that you want and you know why this matters to you, This is where you get to lean into trust. I talked a lot about this through the prosperity series that I did on the podcast because prosperity consciousness is embodied trust. The frequencies are are very similar and this is where it happens. When you know so deeply that you want something in your life and you know why, it's for you. It's meant for you. One of my mentors, Amber Lillystrom, used to say, if the dream is in you, it's for you. And I, I love that. She gave us all journals. I have a journal that says that on front. She was a guest on my podcast in the first year of the podcast, probably back in 2019. Actually, her husband was my first podcast producer. And I, I just always think of that. I've told my kids that. If it's, if it's in you, it's for you. Just like Rumi says, what you are seeking is seeking you. I see this over and over and over again. Once we open up to the possibilities around us, sometimes the thing you think you want is standing in the way of what's actually available for you. So the law of diminishing intent is really important. And I'll tell you why. Because you're going to know if you say no. If you shut the door on an opportunity, when you're being supported on your path of growth, it's going to be painful. And sometimes we do this to self-sabotage. We shut off opportunities. And then if, if we haven't, if we haven't really done the deep inner work, an an easy way to, to deal with this, or maybe you've been on, on the receiving end of this is we project and blame and make it everybody else's fault. So we sabotage relationships, 
when really those relationships were showing up at the right time to support us. And you'll know that your decision was out of alignment because you're going to feel really stuck. And it's going to be frustrating because you just shut down an opportunity on the path that you were meant to step forward on. That's usually how it happens. That's usually what I see. I see people sabotage relationships. They sabotage goals. They sabotage intent. They sabotage their alignment. And uh, what's underneath that? Well, if we, if we dig really deep, sometimes it's that we fear that we're not worthy. That we're not worthy of our dreams. That we're not worthy of having an amazing life. I mean, how often can anybody relate to this? Like, when things are going really well, are you just waiting for the ball to drop? You're just waiting for something like really horrible to happen. And I'm willing to bet every person listening here has had to overcome challenges. We've all probably experienced loss in some way. We've all had challenges. And so are you living in the space of waiting for that to happen again and focusing on that? Or are you moving forward into the person that you're becoming? Making decisions on new possibility versus what happened before. Because if you really, really want to step forward and live the life you truly want, then you need to make decisions. You choose. I choose. Use empowering words. I'm choosing to take action based on who I'm becoming. And the law of diminishing intent is real. I see it happen all the time. The longer you wait now, so what's the, okay, so so what's the difference in asking yourself, is this aligned with my values? Is it the right time? So remember I said you don't have to focus on the how. Learning to trust your intuition, your inner guidance system is super important. And how do we do this? I teach it through the five element wealth. W-E-L-L-T-H. Nourishing yourself every day. Breathing. Taking time for stillness. Hydration. Like those are basic laws of nature that if you're still avoiding those things, nothing that you put intention to is going to be sustainable. I mean, in my opinion, every once in a while, there's a couple people that they can keep pushing and grinding through it all, but we want sustainability. We want quality of life. And my favorite tool to help you to stay intentional besides movement, nourishment, hydration, breath work, meditation, or prayer is journaling. So if you're new to my community, I have a journal that I published. It's on Amazon. It's called the 13 moons. There's 13 moons in one year. So it's 365 days of journal prompts. Each month has a a different theme. Create sacred space, heal the heart, embody self-love, intuitive nourishment, movement, connect to joy, embrace your authenticity, understand your energy body, live in energy alignment and management, abundance, sacred rituals, just having a daily devotional practice of five to ten minutes a day, and then manifesting your dream life. That's Those are the themes within the journal. And then from there, I invite you to do a monthly intention. I happen to do it on the new moon. I've done that for five years. I love that. I love the moon. I am a water person. The moon affects the water. I love to live in sync, in cycles. We are very cyclical beings. And so one of the ways in which I do this that's very obvious every day is through moon cycles. And so... There's some templates in there for you to just create, reflect every month and create an intention. What worked? What didn't work? What can I accelerate? What is my intention moving forward? And then I also do this again seasonally, four times a year, bigger picture, 90 days out. What worked? What didn't work? What's my intention moving forward? Based on the energy of the season, because as cyclical beings, there's, when we learn to live in the flow and alignment with the laws of nature, 
and allow ourselves to be resourced, we're going to have a lot more energy. And I talk about energy management, overtime management a lot because part of the reason that we are suffering from intention deficit disorder is because we're overwhelmed and busy, which again, if you're using those words, there's a misalignment and we're just, we don't have the energy. And that's why I love journaling. So I'm going to put the link in the show notes to check out my journal. It's an amazing tool. And journaling is one of the ways that it's a simple way. Five minutes a day. For most, it's easier than committing to a meditation practice because they're still in their thoughts. It's a way to reduce stress. It's a way to be intentional every single day. It's a way to hone in on what what matters, where your focus is. It's like a, it's a clean slate every day. It's a way to shift your thoughts from negative to positive. It's a way to, to gain clarity on next steps. Some of my clients have shared with me that it facilitates gentle healing because it just raises awareness. And that's exactly how this journal that I created was designed, is to to clear out all the junk and help you get clear. Bring clarity to your intention. So if you're still living and spinning in cycles of indecision, procrastination, and year after year after year, you're just like, oh, I wanted to do this thing last year and I still haven't done it. It's time to get really clear on, is it not the right time or are you really standing in your own way and when i started this show i shared with you the reason that i felt so inclined to share this with you is because i've been going to a couple of networking events lately and i've been getting a lot of feedback that most women share with me that when they look back over their life what they notice is that they are their own worst enemy and they keep getting in their own way So I'm offering you a space, a very simple, low-cost way through journaling to be intentional. Don't allow yourself to live in that space of the law of diminishing intention because over time that just doesn't feel good. And you just get, it's like walking through mud. The longer you stand still in the mud, you just sink down. And we want to take steps forward into who we're becoming. We don't want to be stuck in the mud. It doesn't feel good. It feels heavy. It feels frustrating. So if you're feeling that right now, you're being invited to shake that, move your body, get into your body, shake that off and and ask yourself, like, why am I feeling this way? What is it that I want? What do I need? What is my intention? What aligned action can I take to move forward one small step into the person I really want to become? And yes, of course, always celebrate who you are in the moment. But aren't you curious about really, really embracing and embodying all of just the gifts and the yumminess of who you are? What would that look like for you? What would shift? What would change? What would you do differently? How would you show up differently? What would you create? Are you going to look back at your life and be like, yeah, I I showed up. I lived my truth. I did what I said I was going to do and I did it well. I made mistakes, but I was true to myself. And if you're ready to start with one small step today, I would invite you to try journaling. Whether it's my journal or somebody else's, there are many journals out there. And I would invite you to journal in a way, in a new way. So when I started journaling, it was a lot of brain dumping. It was a lot of like what what I was processing, which is great too. It helps you to process your emotions. But if you're really ready to step into that place of clarity and intention, then I would invite you to start to find a journal that, that asks the questions to really help stimulate that 
reticular activating system into who you want to become. And just give it a try. Try for 30 days, maybe 90. And if you're looking for support, of course, I do offer a journaling membership where you can join us every month. You get daily journal prompts. You can have them texted to you. We have Accountability Soul Sisters. We have four seasonal workshops. We do the whole thing. It's a very low-cost membership that you're invited to join. It's lovely. And maybe this is the year that you give yourself permission just to create clarity and intention with just five minutes a day. Maybe this is the year that more of us commit to being intentional in our lives rather than attention deficit or intention deficit. We, be, we own, we start to own ourselves fully. It's such a wonderful feeling. Last year, my word was sovereignty. And it's really just this energy of like taking ownership for everything just ownership. It doesn't mean that you control everything. That's very different. It's like owning your choices, owning yourself as the source of your time, your money, your opportunities, your service, the way that you show up, your relationships, really taking ownership without projection or blame and just getting super clear. And again, taking ownership on moving forward into who you're becoming. And remember, you don't have to know the how. That's where you get to trust. You get to trust in God. You get to trust in the universe, if that resonates with you. And when you get to that place, it's like freedom. It really is. It's like, and I don't, I wouldn't say that I've completely mastered this yet. I'm I'm I don't know if we ever become the master. I'm still in the process of constantly just like surrendering, I am so pleasantly surprised. Every time I think that something is going to turn out some way, it's always better. But in the moment, it sometimes it feels really painful. And then all of a sudden, within a few hours, like sometimes there's times where I want that I'm wanting an opportunity to do something, or maybe sometimes I'm even hoping I can work with somebody or collaborate with somebody or create something or be in partnership or every once in a while there's like a client I'm like that would be fun to work with that person and then it doesn't happen and then something better happens every single time like every time (laughs) that's where we just get to trust and just be like okay I trust I give it up to you because again what if everything you think you want is better and more available than what you think that's a fun place to be. So I want to invite you today to, to take some time. Consider j- checking out my journal, 13 Moons with Jen Mons. We'll drop the link or even the Daily Devotion membership or, or find some type of journal. And of course, if you're in the space of you're like, yeah, like I'm feeling really called to really take action. Honestly, In my life, I would not be where I am today without the support of mentors, coaches, and healers that I've had along the way. I've invested a lot of time and money in allowing myself to be supported, and it feels really good to say that because I not only did I get to support women in their gifts, but I supported myself and I opened up to receive that because I believed in myself. And and in every moment, did I believe, did I know if I was going to quote, get my money's worth? No, I didn't really ever think about that because none of that mattered because we take ownership for our experience. We don't worry about like, if I'm going to quote, get my money's worth or quote, get the results I want. It's like, no, you take action and then you stay intentional and you get super clear on the what and the why. Is it aligned with me? Is it the right time? Is this the right person? And you just keep taking the next step. And when you're, when you're on your path, it feels really good. And there are moments that will feel challenging. And that's okay too. Those moments give you clarity about what's not working. But if you're sitting in a place right now of just like, ah, oh, you know what that feeling is? It's, it's usually in your solar plexus, just like frustration. Like I'm not moving forward do something about it. Move through it. Get yourself some support. Go move your body. Journal about it. That's stagnation. Move through that. 
If you're making decisions that are keeping you stagnant, you're spinning in indecision, you're procrastinating on the thing that you know you're gonna do, how, how many times do you know you're gonna like do something and the big thing you know you're gonna do just keeps getting pushed to the bottom of the to-do list? Have you ever noticed that? I've noticed that about myself. Remember the seven habits of highly effective people, like the big rocks? Supposed to do the big rocks first and let all the little things fill in after, but somehow we tend to do the little things and not the big things. So let's get clear on the big things. What are those things and wh- and why? Why do those matter? And then you know what? This is the best part. It's really, truly, when you get out of your own way, you're gonna notice, it, it's, this is just so awesome to be in this place. The teachers that you're looking for for where you are are, are there every time. You're gonna notice somebody using the same language as you. I mean, how, how many times are you like, oh yeah, like now I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm seeing the word prosperity or I'm, I'm learning about health and nutrition or I'm, you know, learning about energy or, oh, look, now everybody's talking about human design or I just decided to become gluten-free, whatever that is, right? Like these are things I've been doing for like 15, 20 years. And all of a sudden people are coming into my life like, oh, I just learned about human design and I just decided to give up gluten. I'm like, super awesome. That's great. Like, come on in. I'll show you how to do it. (laughs) And maybe that's not you. Maybe that's not aligned for you. But I mean, not, you know, everybody's a match for somebody else. And that's how it works. When we start resonating on the same level as other people, we realize like all of a sudden, the teacher appears when the student's ready. That's a quote from Lao. Yeah, pretty awesome. All right, my podcast community, I am sending you lots of love today and inviting you to create an intention today. Just what is your intention today? Let's just start with today. What is my intention? And so in closing, I'm going to invite you to just join me in taking a deep breath. This is the best way to settle into space, spaciousness, and intention. So taking a nice deep breath in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Such a beautiful way to balance the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system with an inhale through the nose and an exhale through the mouth. Allowing yourself to settle into your body with every exhale, relaxing just a little bit more. Checking in with the space around you. Noticing sounds, sensations, temperature. And then bringing that awareness to your internal body. Continue breathing, expanding the belly on the inhale through the nose and exhaling through the mouth as you contract the belly. And just asking yourself as you check in, kind of just noticing body sensations, relaxing the space between your eyebrows. Relax your shoulders your belly, relaxing into the truth of who you are. And just asking and being willing to listen. What is my intention for today? And then breathing that word in through your nose. Allowing that word to settle and integrate on a cellular level into your body as you imagine receiving the vibration of that word and then exhale to relax and continue receiving. Notice the difference when you imagine receiving and integrating the vibration of the word, your intention. Embodiment is truth. Be willing to embody and receive truth and energy. Breathing in one more time, this time feelings of gratitude for your one word intention, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. 
letting that intention just settle in is just as a knowing that it's already true. It's already there. Thank you so much for joining again. If you love this episode, please share. My episodes are also shared on YouTube. I've also created a blog on my website, genmons.com forward slash blog, where we are beginning to create episodes in written format. So continue to check that. My blog was lost about four years ago when I switched to a new website platform. And so it's taken me that long to decide, okay, I'm going to create my podcast in blog format so that people can read maybe when you're at work, (laughs) that's where I got the idea, versus listening to what it is that I'm sharing. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I am so grateful that you continue to share this space with me week after week. Have a wonderful day. And if anything comes through for you, I'd love to hear your feedback. Have a great day. Aloha. The content of this podcast is to educate, inspire, and inform you of pathways to an embodied healing self. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice from your medical doctor, therapist, registered dietitian, or nutritionist for any questions you may have regarding your diagnosis or condition. Friends, and thank you so much for joining again each week on the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast, formerly the Embodied Healing Self Podcast. I am so deeply honored to share this space with you every week. I know that there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into, and our community is expanding and growing more with each new episode. I'd like to invite you to come on over to genmons.com forward slash tribe and receive some of the wonderful gifts that we have for you, a meditation bundle, energetic alignment, five element wealth, prosperity, consciousness. We have a ton of different gifts available for you to enjoy. Now, we have one small favor to ask in order for this podcast to get into the hearts and souls of like and light minded people. We need your support. We would love your review and would love it if you'd head on over to genmons.com forward slash podcast to leave a review or leave one on iTunes so that we can continue to share the love beyond out into the world. Thank you so much again for joining in. We'll see you next week.